up guys welcome back to a fresh new video here the las vegas raiders heading into week three have a have an away game one of those early games that in the pacific time will be starting at 10 a.m should be on cbs uh is on cbs paramount plus whatever you want to call it but it's a afc matchup against an AFC South team in the Tennessee Titans. So that game is going to be played out there in Nashville, Tennessee against a Titans team that is struggling as they are also heading into week three, Oh, and two having not won a single game yet. Um, as we are facing that kind of, uh, reality as well being Oh, and two. Okay. So I want to talk about, what each team has done in the first two weeks of the season and how we're going to match up. Um, so let's get started. The Raiders, first key note I want to make, something I have talked about in previous videos that was going to be necessary for us to have wins. And we haven't been able to do this. We haven't been able to win and finish games. So we drew 10 penalties last week against the Cardinals. 10 flags, not acceptable. That's not going to win you games in this league. You know, being penalized that many times in a single game is not ever going to be a good thing. We'll probably never get you uh, a win in this, in this competitive league if you're playing dirty like that. So we need to clean up our, our play, our play. Uh, we just need to play smarter, play cleaner, and be more disciplined. As for the Titans, I'm not sure that they are drawing many flags, but I do know that they aren't producing much on offense. That's a key point that uh, people probably aren't expecting, but it's the reality that they're in heading into week three this year. Um, and so we're going to have to kind of, continue the tape for them if we're going to win this week okay so Derek Henry you know the king of rushing in this league supposedly he's a 6'3 back weighing 250 um is a hard guy to bring down but he had to face the Buffalo Bills and I think that had a big impact in his rushing game last week as he only averaged 1.3 yards per carry um that's shocking that's surprising but when you look at the team he had to play in the Buffalo Bills, it isn't because the Buffalo Bills, man, are a great team. Um, they intercepted Tannehill twice last week and allowed a rating of only 32. Okay, so Tannehill, best believe, had to basically play a top three AFC team in the Bills last week. I would have the Chiefs and the Miami Dolphins currently and the Bills in the top three. As for Derek Carr's rating last week, he got a 99 quarterback rating, which is generous, I would say, as he had no points whatsoever in the second half. Okay, he did not get the ball in the end zone in the second half. That ultimately cost us the game. And so that's pretty generous. I, I, would, I, I would have rated if it were, I don't know what kind of, stats they're going off of but um yeah in my eyes i would have given Derek carr maybe like a seven a seven out of ten for uh, his performance in week two um i can't give him anything really like less than that i feel like because but nothing more for sure because again he ultimately didn't um deliver so but he did have a really good first half just disappeared in the second half during uh what well, at the time when it really mattered so at the time when like his decision making had to be perfect or even just decent i mean that pass to hunter renfro was absolute a, a waste of a play you know as there was just all red car cardinals on that side of the field and you're handing passing it over to hunter renfro really like really 
I mean, football IQ, bro. Like, Hunter Renfro is not a big guy. Like, you can't think that he's going to break all those tackles by himself. So, just pathetic uh, decision making from Derek Carr there. So, but anyways, defenses, okay? Are looking at the defensive side of things. The run defense last week ultimately got stomped by Kyler Murray, okay? Even though uh, the backs didn't produce much, Kyler Murray did. You know, he basically counts as one of those running backs for the Cardinals. So, yeah, our run defense there really, really struggled. But against the run, they've been doing okay, which is uh, a good sign. Um if we're going to ultimately draw a victory out of this game, which I mean, I, I do want, I mean, absolutely. Um, yeah, cause we're going to have to stop Derrick Henry. He, we can't have Derrick Henry or any of these, those other backs, uh, you know, dominating the, uh, time of possession, you know? So, um, their defense gave up three touchdowns, so they don't really have a solid defense, really. But then again, they are facing Josh Allen. I feel like Josh Allen could have done that to any defense, you know, throw three touchdowns. That's common procedure for him. He got a, their defense led up 130 rating to, to him. Um, so, you know, their defense isn't great. It isn't like a shutdown defense in this league. Um, heading into week three so yeah it's a pretty even matchup I mean the the records show that they are evenly matched both teams 0-2 let me talk about um, their how much they're averaging passing per game so the Raiders are averaging 84.7 yards in the air per game that's not great. And the tight ends, 74.4. That's that's pretty much nothing either if you think about it. I mean, you have four quarters. You know, you're supposed to be well above 100 in both these categories. So, yeah, it's been pretty, pretty whack. Uh, our total passing yards has, has been... Uh, Derek Carr has thrown 547 yards through two weeks. And Tannehill has thrown 389 yards. Uh, Tannehill is really looking bad, you know. Um, Derek Carr has thrown four touchdowns and three interceptions. So that ratio is, is not favorable. You know, the four touchdowns isn't great either, by the way. But three interceptions really... I would even count the that last play to Hunter Renfro as an interception. Um, but uh, Tannehill has two touchdowns, two interceptions. Uh, both quarterbacks are really kind of looking silly, honestly, through reading these stats. As far as rushing, same thing. I mean, through two games, we have 144 yards rushing. That's not good at all, guys. Like, we should have that in one week. We should have that in one week, you know? Or not, not that they're averaging. It's like, that's how many yards they've, we've actually only gotten, 144. We should have gotten that in week one, you know? We have backs. What the heck? We've been relying on car, thinking that we're going to just throw the ball and, and move in the air, but then throw three interceptions. So what good is that, you know? So we got to come back to our running game. They have 173 yards on the season, which is cool. But I mean, really not cool because it should be higher than that. You should be putting up uh, 104, uh, over 100 yards per game. You should have, I feel like. So after two games to not even have uh, close to 200, really, like... After two games, like, come on, guys, you guys, this rushing game ain't 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 looking great. So, fumbles. Thankfully, we haven't fumbled in our rushing game. They have though. They've lost. They fumbled twice. So, um, 
you know, the, the, the Titans are looking like a very beatable team. But um, so were the Cardinals heading into week two. So we'll see what happens. Their longest rushing attempt has been for 18 yards, as has ours, surprisingly. And uh, what else can I say, man? I mean, this, this, this wouldn't surprise me. It's a kind of a 50-50 matchup. No, no real dominance I see in, in, in favor of the Raiders here. So I'm going to go ahead and give my prediction and call this video wrap as my analysis heading into this week three against the Tennessee Titans. I'm saying we won't score as many points as I would like. We'll, we'll hopefully cross the 20 yard, 20 points. So I'm going to say 26. How about that? 26 to 20. All right. So tell me what you think. If you have another prediction, go ahead and comment it below. But I have us winning by a, a single possession. So thank you guys. Safe PC user. Go right.